Hey guys, hope everyone is having a wonderful week. I am recording this on my way for vacation. So I'm going down to the beach for a couple days. I'll be working for there. We are in full live event prep. So live event prep, we have our live event coming up in the end of September and we are about as close as you can be to being sold out. Uh, Shout out to my team, Rachel, Lauren, Hannah, and the rest of the crew. They were pushing this thing hard and we are about to sell out the room to the point that I believe the venue is going to be quite pissed at us. But you know what? We will deal with that later. So I am unbelievably excited. I am in the throes of prep. Uh, I know it's going to be good when I literally wake up in the morning thinking about how excited people will be when they hear the content we put out. Uh, It's going to be absolutely incredible. If you're not at this one, we're having another one in January, uh, putting the final touches, West Coast, California. We're getting to the West Coast for all my California folks. So please be ready for that. That is coming up very, very soon. Today's podcast. Today's podcast is actually based off of a Instagram that I posted. Um two days ago from this recording. So that would be, I believe it would be Thursday in August and I don't have my dates, but the podcast was on the heels of my CEO event in Florida where I was in the room with two days. I was in the room for two days with a dozen healthcare entrepreneurs, a, a group that I've been a part of for I think four or five years now. And I calculated roughly over $15 million of revenue in that room. And what's crazy about these groups is oftentimes they disband after two years and ours has been together for almost five. And so to watch the journeys that people have been on, like literally doubling, tripling revenue, double, tripling staff uh, over time has been absolutely incredible to watch and so many life lessons. And so when I posted on Instagram, the five lessons that I took away, I got some really amazing feedback from some other healthcare business owners. And I wanted to go through and give you more of it because I know in the, the format that I put it online, it becomes very, very short form and it's good, but I wanted to give you some long form content. So this is the five areas of which I learned the most from my two days. Just to give you an idea, number one, your business is missing a dependable person. Number two, growth doesn't always mean revenue. Number three, scaling marketing is about becoming a media company. Number four, the four stages of growth. And number five, most people stop because they are bored. So I dive deep into those five lessons that I learned in my CEO group this past week. I hope you enjoy the pod. And hey, please, please, please leave us a five-star review on Apple, on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. It helps spread the podcast word, algorithm, all that jazz. At least that is what they tell me. I appreciate all of you and we will see you soon. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the business school for the rehab chiropractor. Class is officially in session. My name is Justin Rabinowitz and I am a rehab chiropractor on a mission to teach you, a fellow rehab chiropractor, the exact tools and systems I've used to build my own successful rehab chiropractic practice so you can do the same. I hope you enjoy and please subscribe. All right. So number one, your business is missing a dependable person. Anything frustrating in a business at about $500,000 and above typically revolves around the founder trying and failing to do everything. It's exhausting. So as I start to look at the growth and progress of our members in the rehab Cairo community, the ones that are having success, they work by themselves often. And they get out of the gate pretty hot and they'll do all the marketing, all the sales, and they're just highly motivated individuals. And then you start to run the math on what that looks like. And so you guys can just take out a pen and paper and start to crunch numbers. So let's just say someone's charging $300 per hour and they see 30 hours of patients per week. You want to push it to 35, you can do that. And you want to push the number up above that of their hourly rate. We can do both of those. But I think that gives us a pretty good idea. And so if you run those numbers, 30 hours of treatment times $300 an hour, you're looking at about $9,000 per week times 4.2 weeks in a month. That's $37,800 per month times 12 is about $450,600. And then you factor in vacation and, and things like that. If you really look at it, when we start getting to that three fifty four hundred thousand dollar mark as a solo operation, you are completely tapped out. And so I was a little generous in the half a million dollar five hundred dollar mark. Realistically, after about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, four hundred thousand dollars max, max, max in your business, the only possible way that it will grow is if you have dependable people in your business that can help you grow this thing. 
Now, for most people, step one is just getting a person, almost worrying about later if they are dependable or not. But in my CEO group, what we found was people at 500,000, 600,000, 1 million, 1.1. You know, some people had teams of 15, 16 people on their team. This is no joke. 15 or 16 people in a $1.2 million business. But the business was missing one or two dependable people. And the founder of this company, the owner of this company, even though there was a lot of people in that business, working really hard in that business, that you could tell the founder was so stressed that he just felt he needed to put the world on his shoulders and just carry this thing across the line. And what we realized, we were breaking down his business, but it wasn't a marketing problem. It wasn't a sales problem. It wasn't a finance problem. It was that there wasn't one to two dependable people that can help move that business forward. And so if you think about in your personal life, I hope your spouse or someone close to you, they're just people that you can rely on, dependable people. In our business, what I often call them, and I've always said Lauren, who was on our podcast, who many of you in my world know, What I always say about Lauren is she's just a functioning adult. And you laugh because you think that I'm joking, but you would be surprised of how many businesses out there are devoid of a functioning adult. Now, luckily, our business has multiple functioning adults. But early on, the fact that I had Lauren there, who when we started, she didn't have many sales or marketing skills or anything like that. And quite frankly, neither did I. But she was a functioning adult. When we asked her to do something, she did it. If I wasn't there, I knew I could trust that she would get it done. I knew that if she was getting in conversation with someone on the phone, that she was a functioning adult. And even if she didn't have the best sales script or line to say that she was going to be able to have a real conversation with that person. But the ability to have a functioning adult a dependable person in that business, in your business. And the more you have, the better off your business is going to be. But for some of you guys out there that are thinking of how I'm going to grow this thing to beyond just you, or if I'm going to get to that three, four, 500,000, I want to get to seven figures and even beyond that and in multiple locations and all the great stuff, scale stuff that we talk about. The only answer, the only answer, the only answer is to have other people, other dependable people in that business. Now, For you guys out there that are struggling in your own business, I'm talking to you, Mr. Rehab or Mrs. Rehab Cairo out there who's struggling in your business. The question that I have for you is, are you a dependable person? Can your business rely on you to be the first dependable person? Because if you aren't dependable, do not expect to hire other dependable people. Number two, growth doesn't always mean revenue. Building a team, stabilizing, and adding infrastructure are all part of business growth. Businesses often make more money and never truly grow. When I talk with my mastermind members about building infrastructure, about building the bones, about building the foundation of their business, revenue is part of it. It's part of it. It's a part of it. And obviously, if you have money, you can solve a lot of problems. But building out a infrastructure, building out a sales process, building out marketing collateral, building your marketing message, putting a team in place with number one, your dependable person. All of those things are part of business growth. Yes, revenue is part of it. Money is part of it. But it isn't everything. And if you want to build that real business, your growth has to come from having a team, from building functional KPIs, from having backups in each position on the team, and doing the various aspects of the business not involving revenue. Because I know a lot of businesses that are very good revenue businesses, but their business hasn't grown in 15 years. And so for you, if you're out there building your practice, understand revenue is part of it. More money helps, but it isn't everything. Number three, scaling marketing is about becoming a media company. A business who thinks of themselves like a media company will always beat those who think of themselves as a healthcare business. I think so many of us 
are caught in that, am I going to be ethical? Am the, are the people around me, are my colleagues going to appreciate the marketing that I am doing? And what they forget is the best businesses in the world, healthcare or not, are in the business of becoming a media company, not in the healthcare business who puts out social media. And the ones who embrace this are the ones that are going to win. Now, if you are out there and that makes you uncomfortable, here's my challenge to you. Imagine a world where I come to your town in Tempe, Arizona, and build a rehab chiropractic practice down the street from yours. If you think for one second that I'm not going to beat the pants off of you in your business, if I'm a media company and you're a healthcare practice, you are completely out of your mind. He who will create the media company will win. As Dan Kennedy would say, he who is willing to spend the most on marketing will win. And so whether you're in healthcare, you're selling donuts, selling t-shirts, running a bowling alley, those who embrace becoming a media company will forever and always beat those who think of themselves as a business who puts out social media. Number four, the stages of growth. Number one, deny you have a problem. Number two, accept you must fix it. Number three, turbulence while you're doing so. And number four, joy when you've done it. There are a lot of people that listen to my podcast and follow me on social media, and they tell me that they are having fun doing it on their own, and they're making eight or nine thousand dollars a month. They are denying that they have a problem because I'm sorry, folks, but having a business as a doctor that does a hundred thousand dollars in gross revenue per year, you do not have a real business, you have a hobby, you are making less than a teacher. Okay, you are denying you have a problem. I'm talking to everyone listening to this podcast who has a practice. If you're doing less than ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand, fifteen, if you're doing less than fifteen thousand dollars per month, you do not. You are denying you are having a problem. Or my favorite, I just want to do it on my own. You are denying you have a problem. At some point, you accept that you have a problem and that you also must fix it. And that's usually when I get the call. And when you join our program, in the beginning, it's turbulent, just like you've been on a plane. You know how that goes. That is not fun. It's turbulent. Why? Because you're used to charging 80, and now I'm telling you to triple your price. And you've never set KPIs before, and I'm asking you to track your numbers. And I'm telling you to be accountable for social media, and you've never done that before. And it's turbulent. It is tough. It is really hard. But you know what? If you do it, and you stick with it long enough, eventually you get to stage four. And it'll be joy when you've done it. Because finally, 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 you'll be able to see the light. And my friends, hope, hope, hope is a hell of a drug. And number five, most people stop because they are bored. Many are three feet from gold, but they stop growing because the boring work is boring. Stay the course longer than anyone else. I was talking to my mentor about why people leave his program, his coaching program that I'm a student in. And he said, yeah, there's often a few reasons, but the number one reason over and over that they don't know when they leave is that they're bored. He's like, they'll never say that, but they are six, eight, nine months into executing their marketing plan. And it's putting your head down and doing the work and iterating and getting better at it. And they get bored. Now, they say it's not working or it's happening too slow or something else comes up, but the reality is most people just get bored. Oftentimes, a distraction comes up, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Sometimes they're having a baby. Sometimes they get married. Sometimes they go to look through a new space to rent out. Sometimes they start a second business. They'll distract themselves because they're bored, and then they'll make the excuse as to why they're not continually growing their business in themselves. But for so many people out there, the reason why they fail is because they get bored. And I think that, po- that last bullet point for me, almost more than any other one, resonates. Because I can't tell you how many people that started way ahead of me in my journey were making more money than me, had more staff, all of the things were going so well for them. But they just got bored and stopped. 
And all these years later, started my practice in 2015, 2023, eight years later, I'm more excited than I've ever been. I have more energy than I've ever had. And if I can keep that and just not get bored, or maybe even better than that, embrace the boring work. Embrace the fact that sitting down in front of my computer and writing the book and writing my emails and putting on my social media content, even though I've been doing it for eight years, if I can embrace that, yes, it's going to be boring. And yes, sometimes I'm not going to want to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Why am I going to do it anyway? Because most of you won't. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And if you found this content valuable, here are four ways I can help you for free. One, grab a copy of my free guide, the Rehab Chiropractor's Checklist. You can get that at go.drjustinrabinowitz.com slash guide. That's go.drjustinrabinowitz.com slash guide. Two, go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram at Justin Rabinowitz, where I post business content. Three, subscribe to my weekly newsletter by sending me an email at coaching at strive to move.com. And four, leave us a five star review so we can gain access to more influential people and bring those lessons back to you.